I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today we're looking at the Asgard flight controller from my AirBot. It's an F4 flight controller with built-in ESCs. And I, I think this controller is right for some people, but it's got a few uh, gotchas that mean that it might not be right for other people. And of course, I'm going to help you figure out which of those you are. I'm also going to talk a little bit about some of the fundamental limitations that this type of board has and how that all interacts. Stay tuned. Let's start by taking a walk around this board. Here is the underside of the board, which has the F4 chip and the ESCs. Uh, the, here's the FETs that drive the motors, of course. Here's the banks of capacitors. Always makes me feel good about an ESC to see lots and lots of capacitors. Uh, here is the shunt resistor that's used for current sensing. Uh, anytime you see a great big flat resistor like this, uh, it's probably a shunt resistor. Well, on our flight controllers, it's probably a shunt resistor for current sensing. And uh, these are the motor, which is where you connect the motors, one, two, three, one, two, three, motors, one, two, three, and four. Uh, and on the other side, we've got, this is the actual uh, microprocessors for each of the individual ESCs. Uh, this, I believe, is the chip that runs the OSD. Here's the SD card. It's got an SD card slot. You know I like that. And uh, we've got these micro connectors. Now, I'm not a fan of these micro connectors. Uh, we first started seeing them on the SP Racing F3, as far as I know, and it was kind of a revolutionary choice to go with a micro connector like this instead of a pin or direct soldering, of course, which you can always do if you've got pinholes. Uh, the idea is that they take up less room on the board than pin headers, and on a crowded board, they can save you a little bit of real estate. But the downside is. Well, some people say that the downside is that they come loose in flight, and I don't really believe that. I've, I think they're pretty secure. The downside is that it makes actual doing work on the thing more complicated. If you're going to have a board like this or an SP Racing F3 or any board that has this style of, I think they're micro JST, you're going to want to buy a bag of these pre-made headers, four-pin pre-made headers. I'll put a link down in the video description to the one that I got. You can, I got them off of Amazon. You can get them all kinds of places. You're going to want to have spares on hand so you can do repairs. The other reason I don't like them, though, is that uh, it means that you're doing wire-to-wire -wire splices. And those are always ugly. They're, they, I mean, you, you solder it, then you shrink wrap it. It's kind of a hassle. I'd always just rather strip a wire, solder it to a pad, and be done. Uh, so the nice thing is... That this is now this is V2 of this board. V1 we'll talk about in a minute. But the nice thing is that V2 of this board has these pads right here, and those pads are the same pins that are in the pin header in the same order. So you can opt to direct solder, or you can opt to use the the headers, whichever you prefer. And it's nice to give you the option, isn't it? Now here is V1 of the board. It's not that different. It's got a few little differences like. Uh, you can see this bus line here. I don't know what this is for exactly, but it runs like that. Whereas here, we've got this one. It's just here. And there are a few other little differences. And you might ask, well, why have they gone to V2? And the answer is that if you believe what we see on, on, on the RC Group's thread, V1 had an, let's say it had an unacceptably high failure rate. Um, what was the actual failure rate? Well, I, I'm sure somebody knows, but we don't know. I don't know. Uh, it, but, and of course, you only hear about the people who are having the failures. But suffice it to say that when you release a product and then you start getting people posting saying, ah, it smoked, ah, an ESC smoked, ah, it smoked on the RC group thread, that's, that's not good. And so they made some changes. And whatever those changes are, they're reflected in V2. And fingers crossed, V2 is better. The, uh, it is good. My AirBot offers a $45 no questions asked replacement for this board. So if you own this board and it smokes for summer, and that's always the worry with four in one ESCs, isn't it? That you smoke one and now instead of being out 12 or 15 bucks for a single ESC, now you're out 45 or 60 bucks for a four in one. So they're helping to allay some of that concern by saying, well, you'll never be out more than 45 bucks, but that's still kind of the same price as four regular ESCs, depending on which ESCs you buy. So it's good, but it's it's not it's not perfect. If it was 15 bucks, well then you'd be like, well, it never out more than the price of an ESC, it's good to go. But of course, they lose a lot of money that way. So there's a little bit of, of uh, support there, but at the end of the day, if you go with something that's highly integrated like this and it smokes, you're gonna be out a chunk of money. And that helps steer us toward the question of who this is right for and who it's not right for. This board is right for somebody who needs the absolute minimum in space and weight. This is way smaller 
and way lighter than all of these components individually. It's maybe not much lighter than a 4-in-1 and a flight controller, but it certainly is smaller, especially if you're going with one of those low profile, uh, like the Chameleon from, uh, from uh, Armitan. Uh, one of the ones where you don't have a lot of room to go stack, 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 17 boards. I look at things like the Power Cube from Team Black Sheep and it's, it's very clever, uh, but it's got four, four boards in it and many frames these days can't fit four boards in a stack. So many of them struggle to fit three and, and really only have room for two. Uh, and that's if you put the PDB right on the bottom. So if you've got an ultra light or an ultra tight, ultra compact build, something like this, the, the savings in space may make it worth uh, the, the additional risk that when something goes, you're going to be out a larger chunk of money. In order to help narrow down who this is right and wrong for, let's talk about a few of the other things that I don't like, which I'm okay. So I'm picky. I like things the way I like them and I don't like things the way I don't like them. And uh, one of the things that I don't like about this is that it's an F4. And that might surprise you. Why do I not like that it's an F4? Well, F4s have more processing power, but they also have a limitation on the UARTs. The UART, U-A-R-T, that's how I say it anyway, UART, is, uh, is a serial interface, and it's used to talk to your receiver. It's used to do telemetry, and it's used to talk, well, one of the things it's used for nowadays is smart audio. Smart audio being the thing that lets you control your video transmitter channel and power from your your uh, your OSD or from your Tyrannus if you're running a Lua script, all those different things. Uh, so UARTs are pretty important. Uh, and F4 chips don't have something called UART inversion. And what inversion, let's put it this way. Some serial protocols need inversion and some serial protocols don't need inversion. So for example, SBUS, FreeSky SBUS and smart port telemetry need a UART that has inversion. Uh, Spectrum, like if you have a Spectrum satellite receiver, doesn't need inversion, I think. IBUS also, I think, doesn't need inversion. Uh, so on an F3 chip, this is not an issue. Uh, all of the UARTs on an F3 chip support inversion. And actually, and that's because, I, so I've been told the F3 chip, even though it's a lower number than F4, actually is a newer chip and has a, a more features. It runs slower though. Uh, so on an F3 chip, it doesn't really matter. You just put telemetry where you want it. You put SBUS where you want it. You it just, wherever you want it, you're ready to go. Inversion is not an issue for you. But on the F4, the manufacturer has to think about where they're going to put inversion. See, what they've done here is they have added an inverter. Here it is. This is the inverter right here. Uh, and they've pre-decided for you that one of these UARTs is going to have inversion enabled on it. You don't have the option to turn that on or off. Well, that's not entirely true. Uh, this one can be turned off depending on which version of Betaflight you're running. So you can have the option to turn it off. And this one is pre-wired on UART, this UART here. So this is where you're going to put SBUS if you're running FreeSky SBUS. This is the only place you can put SBUS because nothing else supports inversion. And if you want to do something like Spectrum, which doesn't use inversion, you can put it there too and it can be turned off in, in software. But you can't turn on inversion on this one. That's not an option. There's no little inverter chip that will make that happen for you. So let's say you're doing what my standard loadout now is smart port telemetry, SBUS from the receiver, and nowadays also smart audio. So I need three UARTs. And right now we immediately start to see a problem. We've only got two UARTs broken out here on this on this board. The uh, There's an additional UART broken out right here, these teeny tiny little pads, which okay, I can solder to those, but you know, um, I, that's, Ouch, right? I mean, clearly not. <laughs> I'm clearly an afterthought at that point. And I am an afterthought uh, because on the RC Group's thread, the, the response from the manufacturer was, well, look, you know, you've got two UARTs. One of them is for, for your receiver. The other is for whatever else you want to do, like smart audio. And you don't really, you know, who needs telemetry if you've got an OSD? Well, that's a good question. I, I want telemetry even though I have an OSD. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is that when I'm flying, I'm often not glancing down at the OSD because I'm too busy flying. And I like having my Tyrannus give me voice alerts. I've got my Tyrannus set up so that whenever the voltage drops below, I think it's 14.4 volts for more than I think it's one second, it reads it out to me. So I'll do a big punch out or a big throttle jam and it'll say 14.3 volts. And I immediately know how much I sag down to. 
And as I get toward the end of the battery, it gives me those audible alerts just to help me remind me, hey, look down at your OSD. Or maybe if I don't want to, I still know when I need to land. The other reason I like telemetry is that I think that I like to joke that the Tyrannus is the world's biggest, most complicated battery checker. If I just plug in a battery and I'm getting ready to fly, I don't have to wait until I, I've got the battery plugged in, the copter set down, ready to fly, glasses off, goggles down. Oh, the battery wasn't charged. Right? Oh, goggles up, glasses on, pick up the quad. As soon as I plug the battery in, I can just glance down at the Tyrannus and see what the voltage is. Very convenient. So for me, uh, telemetry is not an afterthought, even when I have an OSD. I know not everybody feels that way. So this kind of board, I think you would have to really want the thing. I say this a lot. You have to really want the things it brings to the table more than you care about the things where it sort of falls short. And where it falls short for me is there's only two UARTs broken out. Yeah, you can get at the third one, but it's a little bit of a hassle to solder to. Those tiny pads, they're, they're notorious for coming off. So, so it's a little bit of a hassle there. And because of the way inversion works, you're also going to have to, if you run FreeSky, you're going to have to get at the uninverted smart port signal. See, this one has inversion for SBUS, but this one doesn't have inversion for smart port. And there's various ways of working around that. You can easily get at the uninverted SBUS signal, and maybe you could put it here on UART1, and then you could use the inverted UART here for smart port. But these are the kind of hoops that uh, I'm less inclined to jump through. What, you know, back in the day when I was when, with NAS32 was what we all ran. If you wanted to run SBUS, you figured out how to get the uninverted SBUS output out of your receiver. And if you had to do some kind of crazy stuff to make that happen, you bit the bullet and you made it happen. But these days we have so many choices that I feel less inclined to jump through those hoops. Maybe some of that is because I'm just uh, more of a curmudgeon than I used to be. And maybe it's because I'm a busy, busy hot snot YouTuber who doesn't have time for this nonsense. And uh, maybe it's because the market has matured to the point where you have so many other choices that we don't have to compromise as much. So I think there's two kinds of people who this board is really going to appeal to. One is the kind of person who absolutely needs this kind of ultra low profile integrated thing for whatever kind of build you're doing where that is your top priority and you're willing to jump through those other hoops in order to get it. And the other kind of person this build, this product is going to appeal to is the kind of person who doesn't care about inversion. If you don't run free sky, then inversion, what inversion? Non nonsense. I don't care. And all these UARTs are just fine for you. If you're not interested in running telemetry or smart audio, if any, if you only need two of out of those three things, telemetry, smart audio, and serial receiver, again, this is great because you've got those two UARTs broken out for you. It's not a big deal. But for somebody like me, uh, number one, I, I care more about the hassle of having to replace the whole damn thing if it breaks than I do about saving a few grams or saving a few you know, millimeters of, of stack space. And, uh, and I do run FreeSky, and I do want all of those three things. For somebody like me, I'm not sure that this is a board that I would be in a huge hurry to put into one of my builds. But that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that maybe it's not for me. And if it's for you, hopefully now you know. Thanks for watching, and happy flying.